This is a camera that many have built careers on. It shoots motion pictures. It's used in live production every single day. It's widely adopted, widely trusted, and produces beautiful images. Today we are finishing up my Ursa review series with the most popular of the three, the trusty Ursa Mini Pro 4.6K G2. We need to talk about the difference between the three Ursa models real quick. You have the Ursa Broadcast, which is mainly designed for broadcast work, although we've recently found out that it's good at basically everything. You have the more compressed file types, you have streaming features, and the main downside is probably the rolling shutter performance. Then there's the Ursa 12K, which is designed for really high-end motion picture work. It's designed for cinema, it's designed to be built out. You have a crazy amount of resolutions available to you. And then nestled somewhere in between is the 4.6K G2 because the rolling shutter performance is great, the dynamic range is great, but you still have different formats to choose from because the 12K only gives you Blackmagic RAW, the 4.6K G2 will give you Blackmagic RAW, but also ProRes. So it's kind of in between the two. As far as specs go, we are looking at a 4.6K Super 35 CMOS sensor that can shoot 4.6K up to 120 FPS and 300 FPS at 1080p. Dynamic range is also excellent, topping out at about 12 and a half stops at a signal to noise ratio of two and about 13 and a half at a signal to noise ratio of one. Of course, we have two, four and six stop reductions in internal ND filters. And on the back, we have the normal and excellent array of I.O. that Blackmagic gives us in all of the Ursa models. Thankfully, this is one of the models that has a USB-C port in case you want to plug in an SSD. If you're recording internally, there is the usual dual SD card slots and dual CFast slots. Of course, we have Blackmagic RAW at 4.6K with all of the different compression modes. And on the 4.6K G2, we also have ProRes recording with a bunch of different flavors and a bunch of different resolutions. All in all, as far as the body goes, this is the same old story, but that's not a bad thing. I love the Ursa body. I think it's the perfect weight for handheld work. As soon as you put a battery and a lens on it, you have all kinds of professional IO. It feels rock solid, and from my experience, they are all extremely reliable and have never let me down. So just like the other Ursa bodies that Blackmagic offers right now, it is an absolute joy to use. As usual, the thing that matters the most is the final image that the camera will give you. And again, this is the usual Blackmagic story, which is also a good thing. There is plenty of sharpness, especially if you're shooting at 4.6K, but it's not clinical, it's not razor sharp, it's just cinematic, organic, and all of those other buzzwords that we all love. Dynamic range is absolutely massive, and the roll-off is well handled. I think that all of the tones are really gentle. It's really easy to work with this footage, especially if you're working in Blackmagic RAW. There aren't a lot of other camera systems that I can shoot with and look down at my monitor even while I'm shooting and just be blown away by the image that I'm seeing. And it's always fun when I load all my footage into my computer and start color grading because I'm just impressed by the image every single time. I think you can get a really good image with almost any camera on the market now, but it really does help in the production process to get a camera that will give you an amazing image right out of the gate and give you the bit rates and the files that will allow you to push and pull things and make them look just the way you like it. All in all, the image is truly fantastic and none of us are surprised. So why would anybody pick up a 4.6K G2 when there's the 12K out there, there's the broadcast G2, there's things like the Pocket Cinema line, this is the Pocket Cinema 6K Pro, this is a ridiculously good camera and it's only 2,500 bucks. Why would you go with the 4.6K G2? I think that the broadcast G2 gives it a run for its money. However, because the 4.6K is so widely adopted. It came out way before the other models. There's so many of them out there. You can pick them up really cheap used, which is a big factor for me. I almost, I think I've bought every camera I've ever owned used, which if you're gonna do, make sure that you're paying attention to your eBay seller and doing your homework and whatever. You can pick them up for pretty cheap if you look in the right places and, and, and one in great condition too, that'll serve you for years. So I just want to hop over to eBay really quick and show you guys something. So we have sold items checked. So these are actual listings that have sold. 
And as you can see, you can score a 4.6K G2 for, you know, three grand, maybe even a little bit below three grand, depending on what accessories are brought on. So the cost of entry into this system, into the Ursa system is getting lower because there's so many of these out and they're, they're so popular. If you're buying it new, it's almost the same price as the 12K. So at this point, you're really asking yourself if you want 12K resolution or if you want more codec options, because again, the 12K only gives you Blackmagic RAW. The 4.6K will give you ProRes as well. I think the Broadcast G2 is the most bang for your buck out of all the Ursas. The only caveat to that is if you really cannot stand rolling shutter, you don't wanna see any rolling shutter in your footage, which is a big deal for a lot of cinematographers, then you're probably gonna to wanna to go with the 4.6K or the 12K. All of the different Ursas are a little bit close together, but they do have different strengths and different weaknesses. And I think the 4.6K G2 is an excellent investment for almost everybody. A more fun question to ask is what should Blackmagic do next going forward? I think since the 4.6K was the first to be released, the first to be offered out of the three Ursa lines, maybe it should be the first to be discontinued or redesigned. Let the 12K be your high-end cinema line and let your broadcast be your broadcast camera. And then redesign the, the 4.6K and release like a new fresh Ursa, or maybe it's called something new, maybe it's a completely new body style or bring back something like the, do you guys remember the Blackmagic Cinema Camera, the 2.5K? That thing was so cool. If you redesign something like that and then release it, and it's something between an Ursa and one of these, it's small, but it's still made out of metal like the Ursa is. Maybe you have professional IO, some XLRs, a screen that articulates. It's made out of metal and internal NDs and then honestly a 4K sensor, who cares? And then put it at a price point just a little bit higher than the pockets. So it's kind of like a professional pocket or like a light version of an Ursa. But anyway, that's what I think. All three of the Ursas are amazing cameras. They're all slightly different for slightly different operators, but all three of them will make your life way easier as an operator because of the features that they give you and the final image will always look amazing. So thanks for making those black magic. I owe you one.